Hello, my name is Mr. T. I'm a graduate student at Rochester Institute of Technology, and I am an aspiring art teacher working with Mr. Antonucci to bring you the Doodle with Mr. T uh, sketch series where I teach you how to draw, sketch, paint, and use all different types of materials to create art where you are. Um, in these unprecedented times, I think now is a better time than ever to create, right? Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. I was once a Geneseo High School student. Um, I walked the same halls as you did and I graduated with Mr. Antonucci as my art teacher, just like you. So moving forward, um, I'd like to teach you a lot of what I've learned since being at Geneseo High School. I feel like I have a lot to um, give to the art community and I hope that you enjoy the videos. And if you are following along, um, please send your artwork to Mr. Antonucci because I would love to see it. Um, thank you. And I hope again that you enjoy the videos that I have made and the ones that I will continue to make. Welcome back to Doodle with Mr. T. Today's doodle, pointillism. Pointillism was pioneered by 19th century French artist Georges Seurat. Uh, pointillism is a collection of colorful dots which blend together to the viewer's eye, creating a composition. When we zoom in on Seurat's work, we get a better idea of what pointillism is. Looking closely, we can actually see the small strokes of color that Seurat applies to his canvas. From a distance, the sky looks yellow and blue, but when we zoom up close, we see there are a plethora of other colors involved. Today, we are going to use markers to create a Seurat-inspired pointillism tree. Um, first, I want to go over different pointillism techniques. One of the most important things to consider when doing pointillism is consistency. Um, I'm going to show you an example of what inconsistent pointillism looks like and then what contrastingly consistent pointillism looks like. I believe for certain things in nature inconsistency can actually work so when we're doing our trees um, I do use a more inconsistent uh, pointillism style. It's always helpful to use a value scale when practicing shading so I encourage you to uh, go along with the video and create a value scale of your own. I want us to practice consistency um, when we're doing pointillism because when you are inconsistent uh, you can create value that you didn't intend or draw something that you didn't intend to draw. So when we group uh, dots together it creates a heavier uh, space of value there, a heavier weight of value there, and that can create um, unintended detail. You can even create texture that you didn't intend, and it's good to have um, control, or a better control, over what you're doing and the materials you're using. And in my last video, we talked a lot about gradation. So this is uh, just going to be a range of values. So uh, more value is going to be applied on the left side of this value scale. And then as I move to the right, I'm going to apply less and less value. And I'm going to try to do so um, with an inconsistent uh, technique in this box just to show you uh, the difference between what consistency and inconsistency looks like, but you'll still see um, a range of values. So when I'm doodling and I'm using pointillism, uh, if I'm going to doodle something that's found in nature, I'm more likely to actually use um, inconsistent uh, value adding techniques. Since trees or leaves are uh, organic shapes, um, which means they're asymmetrical, this often leaves inconsistencies. And these inconsistencies can be captured um, through inconsistent shading, uh, which we will get into more uh, when I actually show you how to create um, a value range which looks like a tree or the leaves on a tree. Um, we're going to go over how to create a value range that looks like leaves uh, using pointillism and using three different colors. Another aspect of pointillism to consider, especially when using markers, is density. Um, you can make areas more dense by grouping dots closely together, um, like you see in the inconsistent uh, boxes, or by 
uh, pressing harder with a marker because that's going to create a larger dot in a more dense area. And then in this instance, pressure is how hard or how light you're going to push down um, with our marker. Right? So if you push down harder, you're going to have a bigger dot. If you push down lighter, you're going to have a smaller dot. And that's going to affect uh, the density of an area um, or how much value is in an area. And lastly, I'm quickly speeding through how to gradate with color. Um, and that creates a really cool effect, as you can see at the top of the page here. I gradated it from blue to green to yellow to create a, um, a bundle of leaves here um, that will be the form of our tree. And I realize this video is moving quickly. Um, if you want to, you can always pause um, any part of this video and replay any part of this video. Um, if you want to go through the video with me at a slower pace, that's absolutely fine. Um, when I'm drawing trees, I usually draw a group of organic shapes, a group of organic uh, circular shapes. And each one of these shapes represents a different group of leaves that is being affected by our light source that you see in the top left hand corner. Each one of these individual shapes is going to um, be affected by the light differently and each one of them is also going to be gradated from yellow to green to blue. Um, and that just means there's going to be a range of values going from yellow to green to blue. And I often like to do these um, smaller thumbnail drawings so I get an idea of what um, the tree is going to look like and the color scheme I want to use. And now I'm going to quickly run through uh, the tree making process just to show you um, how I create leaves. I usually uh, put down the yellow first, my light source first, and then place the green underneath it and then apply the blue or the darkest color last. Um, I usually put down the lighter color first in marker because you can always go over a lighter area um, with a darker mark, but you cannot go over a darker area with a lighter mark when you're using marker. And I'm just going to uh, create a bunch of little dots and each one of these uh, circles that you can't really see here, it's kind of light, but I, I drew those circles again. Um, and I'm just gonna draw each individual area uh, the same way, essentially going from yellow to green to blue. And I'm keeping in mind that my light source is on the left there. So all of my light, um, light areas um, in each one of these circles are actually going to be uh, to the left. And as you can see in my shaded area, uh, my markings are actually denser because I'm using an inconsistent shading technique. This means that my dots are being grouped closer together. And now I'm going to start my actual drawing and I'm just going to draw a rough outline of the tree and I'm going to include um, each one of these individual circles which represent the leaves. So enjoy this time lapse of me creating a pointillism tree. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot and feel free to do some more research into pointillism. Um, I really love this drawing technique and I use it all the time. Uh, and for those of us who are following along with the video, uh, please, please send your work to Mr. A. Uh, I would love to see the pointillism drawings that you come up with. Um, I hope you have a better understanding of the pointillism techniques that I have covered today. Um, and I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with on your own creative endeavors. Thank you so much for tuning in to yet another Doodle with Mr. T. Thank you.